Hello race fans, Dan Selby here. With a motorsport season on hold, more championships are holding virtual races to make up for the lack of action. Are they a good substitute for the real thing? And which series has got the best approach? Let's talk virtual racing with race fans editor Keith Collinsine. Keith, which series have you been following? Um, I've been trying to follow everything I can. Um, there's obviously a lot out there at the moment. I think like a lot of our uh, viewers, I took a lot of interest in uh, Formula One starting its uh, virtual series up, its eSports series, uh, which it started a couple of weeks ago. Um, and also uh, IndyCar's uh, series, I thought has been really interesting as well, using iRacing. There's a lot of other ones that I've had a bit of a look into, but those are the ones I've mainly sort of sat down and watched. And I have to say, I've been surprised that, I mean, you wouldn't call it a replacement for the real thing, but I've been surprised just how entertaining and how engaging it can be. It's a bit of an adjustment, isn't it? Uh, you know, I, tr I tried, tried probably being the, the key word here. I tried to watch the initial uh, Formula One eSport race, and I must admit, uh, I found it a little bit of a struggle. It's, it's a little bit jarring at first. There's an awful lot to, to get used to in terms of some of those fundamental changes from the real thing to, to the virtual side of things. But what I would say is that the, the most uh, recent race that they did in Australia I felt was a, a big step forward um, in terms of its presentation and, um, you know, certainly who they had racing uh, was a big positive step forward. So what are some of the, the key differences uh, from your perspective between the, the Formula One and the IndyCar Series eSport races? Yeah, I mean, I would certainly agree with you that there's been a, a step change between the first two Formula One races and the second one was quite a bit better than the first. I think the big change, obviously, you notice is that IndyCar has, has made a really big effort to get as many of its active drivers in as possible. And they had 29 drivers in their second race, the vast majority of which were regular IndyCar drivers. That's absolutely fantastic. And, and when you look at that, they're out there, uh, they're using iRacing for the game. They've got up to date uh, car models that even include the new aero screen for this year. They've updated them with the latest liveries, which is obviously great for the team's sponsors. And you've got, for example, uh, Marcus Ericsson's got his Husky chocolate racing livery. So they're all bang up to date for 2020 as well. Um, and they've got uh, you know this really interesting big roster of tracks. Those, I think, are the, are the big strengths of the IndyCar series. Of course, on the Formula One side, what they've not done so well is that, that key thing of getting as many F1 drivers in as they can. That improved um, for the most recent race, um, the virtual Vietnam Grand Prix, which was, of course, held on Melbourne because the Vietnam track isn't built into F1 2019, which is what they race on. Um, so they had more drivers. I felt that was an improvement. They had a lot of sort of celebrities and influencers in their first race. I have to say, you know, I, I think there's an appetite for, for that kind of thing. I'm not sure whether there's an awful lot of people who want to see both F1 racers and influencers and sort of junior drivers from the teams all racing together at once. That, that felt to me a little bit like trying to be all things to all people and they need to pick one thing and, you know, either go with all drivers or go with, you know, affluent influencers and, and other people like that from, from different backgrounds to try and go after the big audiences they can bring in and maybe pick sort of one or another. I feel like they're moving towards going with just F1 drivers as long as they can get more of those in. And, and I think that is an improvement that they're making. So you've spoken to F1 and Codemasters about the series. What have they had to say about it? When the Formula One series was first announced, I had a chat with uh, Julian Tan, who's F1's head of esports, and he was talking about how it came together very, very quickly. I mean, obviously, when the Chinese Grand Prix was cancelled, that was back in February, that was when they first started thinking, oh, maybe we should put some kind of esports replacement on. But then we had that rush of cancellations after, obviously, the problems they had in Australia, Bahrain and Vietnam uh, were called off as well. And suddenly they realised they were going to have to put something on a lot more quickly. And that, I think, was why you saw a very mixed field for that first race, uh, the Bahrain weekend. They've obviously had the chance to improve things um, a bit since then. You've also got to keep in mind, you know, and for, for this goes for IndyCar and everyone else putting these things on. It, it's a pretty big infrastructure challenge to have all these drivers um, playing from different areas remotely and then turn that into you know a product that is broadcast quality and I think another area they're going to have to look at and I particularly felt this with the second F1 race was a lot of the time the footage quality wasn't that great you saw them relying on the drivers on boards quite a lot and I think they had to do that for image quality reasons I think when you were looking at the the outboard shots or the sort of standard tv camera shots we would think of the picture quality needed a bit of work there 
So the two key differences from my perspective between the Formula One and the IndyCar streams is that the, the, the first thing is I feel like the IndyCar are doing the on-screen graphics a lot more true to life and therefore it makes it an awful lot easier to follow the races. They, they've bridged that gap very, very nicely. Secondly, and perhaps more of a key issue from my perspective, is the lack of damage on Formula One. Now, I understand it lends itself perhaps more towards their, um, their celebrity racers who may or may not have as much experience as some of the Formula One racers are on the sim rigs. But one of the key reasons why I think some people find it difficult to watch the eSport races is not necessarily the lack of danger, but perhaps the lack of consequences and uh, you know if you make a key error you want to see those errors punished and by having no damage whatsoever on the formula one i'm finding it a little bit difficult to properly engage and perhaps take it as seriously as i would like to if you could make one key change key from your perspective to the f1 esports series what would it be I think you raise a really good point about the damage, first of all. I think if you watch the uh, IndyCar race, particularly the second one that they just had on Barber Motorsport Park, you could see how the fact that the cars could be damaged and the greater consequence of going off really added into that race. We had a, a really exciting moment between Sage Caram and Felix Rosenquist, who were the two drivers who dominated the first of the IndyCar races when they got together. So I think that's something to consider. I think maybe given the characteristics of F1 2019, they'd have to consider shortening the race distance and maybe going for two quarter length races, perhaps, you know, with a reverse grid or something like that to make that work a little bit better. I think the other thing that Formula One's really got to look at is simply trying to get more of the regular drivers or the uh, the team's junior drivers involved. It's a real shame that we've got, you know, drivers who are sat there. We know they've got, you know, all the PC kit they need to come and join in, uh, like Max Verstappen, but they simply aren't doing. I think that's a real shame for Formula One. If you look at the, the spirit of competition among the IndyCar drivers, that's really what we expect to see from drivers like Max Verstappen, who I'm sure would be really competitive uh, with the likes of uh, Charles Leclerc and all the rest of it. I suppose the other thing F1's really got to look at is these connection problems that some of the drivers have been having. Uh, Lando Norris, for instance, is clearly quite frustrated uh, with the level of reliability problems he's been having. He even went so far as to uninstall F1 2019 um, during Sunday's race, although I have to wonder, uh, he may well uh, add it back onto his system. I'm pretty sure we'll see him racing again soon. Uh, but in terms of the one thing that I think F1 needs to uh, address with its virtual game, I mean, top of the list still for me is get more of those real drivers involved because that really, I think, is what people want to tune in and see. However seriously we're going to take it, I think we want to see you know, the, the names that we know um, racing in the official F1 esports series. Of course, there's much more to motor racing esports than just F1 and IndyCar series. On Race Fans, we're putting together a calendar of when and where you can watch these and other series which are racing through the hiatus. For that and more, make sure you're following at racefans.net on Twitter and Facebook. And of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss our next new video on YouTube. Thanks for watching.